This morning I'm thinking about time, man. The effect of writing on time, the effect of editing on time, and the effect of time on me as a human. <laughs> Good morning. Good to be on the ride with you today. lovely people of the planet. This is Jeff O. This is the Morning Ride Pedal Powered Podcast. We talk about uh, what it means to be a creative, an artist in the real world, how we make those two things both work for us. I don't know anything. This is just my experience. I'm sharing with you and you guys can share with me. Puddle there. Drank some water from somewhere. (laughs) I don't know nothing, folks. I'm just a dude on a bicycle out here on a beautiful morning trying to evolve as a filmmaker, as a poet, and as a human being. Really appreciate you letting me ride along with you this morning. So how was your weekend? you do anything interesting? Jennifer and I got to go down to Long Beach, California for memorial service for one of her friends and that was a really touching service for me I'm really excited about the uh, getting to meet the family of uh, one of Jennifer's best friends I'd met Sue a few times and it was uh, good to be at her service and that along with uh, I've been thinking a lot about time anyway and how we spend our time and how we use our time and how do we construct a life, how do we imagine a life, and then how do we execute that, how do we, how do we imagine a life and then live that life, and one of the things I didn't know Sue particularly well, but I thought it was really cool to see in all of the stories that people recounted about their memories of of Sue is uh, her ability to imagine a life and live it, and even more importantly, how grateful she was for every day. She had a heart condition that uh, she didn't expect to live. Doctors told her that she probably wouldn't live beyond her teens. And uh, so every day was kind of a a special gift for her and and she really seemed to live that way. And so it was was cool to see people remembering that. I'll be honest, I didn't want to talk about this, folks. I don't know that I have a right to talk about it. So I'm going to leave it at that. We had a good weekend. I was very grateful that we got to go and be a part of the service. It's also nice to get out of town, get out of the routine a little bit, although we haven't had routine in a while, so I'm not sure if if it counts that the routine is randomness. been thinking a lot about time though and about uh, really trying to get some projects done and I've got all this noise in my head about these film projects because they're going to cost money and time and is it worth my money and time and the thing is is that I'm grateful to get to be out thinking about creating stories and hopefully creating stories that people connect with and find some inspiration from so yeah I think I think that makes it worth it, and I'm really grateful to be able to provide a little bit of that, maybe. I don't know. I really don't know what I'm saying this morning, do I? (laughs) My fallback plan was to talk about editing, and specifically about this blog and why I choose not to edit the blog. The blog. I think we call this a podcast now, don't we? (laughs) Man. But the reason I choose not to edit it is because I wanted it to be, I want this podcast to be like a real discussion. I want it to feel like it's in real time that we're talking together because I I definitely feel that we are. I want to get little messages from you guys and hear about what your ride is and how things are on your ride. That really makes me happy and 
So I feel like it's part of a discussion. If you want to be part of that discussion, tell me about your ride. I'd love to hear about it. Hit me up on Twitter or Instagram at Morning Ride Pod. I know it's horrible, but it fits with the website, which is MorningRidePodcast.com. I'd love to hear about your ride, what you're doing, how you handle the daily as a creative, as a student, as a professional, how you balance the, you know, like your intentionality in life, the what it is you want to be doing with the uh, kind of what I call the bureaucracy of making daily life work, which is to say like day jobs, making the bed, (laughs) doing laundry, those kinds of things. That's kind of the bureaucracy of life. Hey, good morning on your left here. Oh, wow, it's so much louder up here. This part of the trail. We cruise under this in the mornings usually. Kind of taking a recovery day, didn't go into the office. Thank you, Shad, for that. Alright, let's see how this one's coming on. Well, I got a lot of people out enjoying the trails this morning, which is really nice. This is a trail Jennifer and I used to take when we lived up on the bench here in Boise. I haven't been over here in a while, I thought it'd be nice to see something a little different. So the original idea of not editing the podcast was that it saves time. That basically we record, we start recording, and then we stop recording and whatever happens is what happens. But I didn't realize that that would end up being a really sincere thing because I end up saying things that are stupid or things that I didn't realize I wanted to talk about or needed to talk about. And they just kind of pop out. So it's kind of nice that uh, we don't edit those out, I think. On the plane ride home yesterday, I read the script for the movie Arrival, the one with Amy Adams and uh, <laughs> I want to call him Clint, but that's his name in uh, in uh, the Marvel series, isn't it? Blinking on his name right now. You know who I'm talking about. The film Arrival, anyway, and about how they discovered that the aliens don't experience time linearly. And I've been thinking a lot about that because it's kind of interesting to consider how our dreams aren't linear. And do they happen in time? Are they memories? Or like, are we experiencing more about life and the world around us when we're sleeping because our egos and conscious minds aren't interfering? just a thought I kind of started having. Yeah, this is a good place to turn around, isn't it? I've been thinking about that a lot since I read the script. I uh, I was part of a class last week, one night last week. um, I was writing the profound screenplay and they were talking about Arrival and why that what about it makes it a profound story, really, more than screenplay, but um, I thought it was really interesting to consider that again. I haven't seen that film in a while. Well, actually, we, saw, we hadn't seen it in a while, and so Jennifer and I saw it a couple weekends ago, and it's a really great one. I highly recommend Arrival. The thing that I love about really great sci-fi, where the science fiction part, you know, they're not... Um, Well, I mean, like, Star Wars is actually a fantasy film because it's not based in Earth physics and reality, which makes it fantasy. They don't have to explain how the land speeder works when they're cruising through the deserts of Tatooine because it's not based in reality. It's fantasy. 
But in Arrival, it takes place on Earth. And so, uh, you know, there's basically aliens that come to, the, come to Earth, which makes it science fiction because it's beyond what science can describe, which I think is really funny. It's been interesting. I've been thinking a lot about science, too, and how people say that everything is science, and I've been seeing the importance of science and all of this. And, but basically, science is just a way of articulating a single perspective of the universe. It's, there's nothing more than that. <laughs> um, and if you're really wanting to communicate that, you know, like in the movie Contact, you know, poetry a lot of times can express the, the gravity or the situational effect of the science in a way that science doesn't because science is only looking at the thing. I'm not going to get off on that tangent today, you guys. Don't worry about it. Anyway, I've been thinking about this podcast and some, some people have asked, it's like, well, you put music to it and, you know, you put the things on the ends and isn't that editing? And I call that producing. Um, it's part of the production of presenting the podcast. I don't consider that editing because basically once I start recording, I keep recording until, uh, until the monkey gets tired, I guess. Um, I start recording and keep recording until the podcast is done. Hey, good morning on your left. Boy, there's so many folks out. It's, it's a really beautiful day, as you can see, which is nice. Whew. I felt good. Sometimes going the other way <clears throat> feels really good. We're probably getting a lot of wind noise today. I figured out that wind noise has to do with my backpack strap. on your left here. So to produce the podcast, yeah, we put music in front of it and we trim off the ends, you know, because obviously I start recording before I'm ready. So we cut all the stuff off at the beginning and at the end, but basically once I hit record, and start the podcast, that's the podcast. So that's the whole idea behind not editing. Now, the other idea is that, you know, I sit at home and, hey, good morning. I don't like to write in the mornings to kind of come up with an idea. Most of the time I don't really get it. <laughs> I'm, uh, hey, good morning. Good grief. Try to run us down. <laughs> Most times I don't capture it exactly the same. I'm, a, I'm more able to be precise verbally, I mean, uh, in words written than I am speaking, which is another reason I tried to start this podcast was because I'm trying to figure out how to tell a story and express an idea better. I don't think that's part, I don't think that part is working out for us, is it? <laughs> So I've also been thinking about how writing is a way of projecting myself into the future, because this writing happens in real time, right? About memories or whatever, but it happens in real time. So it's kind of like, what if it could have been like this? Or what if the world was like this? In terms of writing fiction, even in terms of writing narrative is just a way of making sense of the world. You know, like working on an essay, uh oh. Do I have a flat going on here? Uh oh, hard to see. Hard to see. Hey, good morning on your left. Well, I really got to fix that front brake. It's squeaking more and more.
So I think it's interesting how with the writing I'm trying to project into the future, and with the, like in the podcast, the not editing, how that is uh, a way of making sense of what happened. But then for a film project, everything happens in the editing because it's taking parts of the past, what we know, accumulated knowledge, accumulated memories. Of course, those are all recorded for filmmaking, of course. And then in the edit is when you put all of those together to hopefully make a compelling story. Thinking about how in life we don't get that opportunity. We live it. Hit record, we come out and then uh, live our lives until someone hits the stop button, I guess. <laughs> Woo! Sorry about all that wind, folks. Oh, wow. Woo, that is a lot of wind. Sorry, folks. Well, that's it for me today. Thinking about writing, how I use that to see an alternative future, think about editing as a way of making sense of the future, of the past, or even the present, I guess. And how I'm so grateful for great storytellers that put together films like Arrival, and how grateful I am for people, knowing people like Sue, who lived, who imagined and lived her life in the way that she did. Grateful to be part of it today. Grateful to be on this ride with you this morning, folks. Hey, if you love riding a bicycle, get out on a bicycle. And here, obviously, a bicycle is a metaphor for whatever it is that is uh, your thing that you do. I hope you have a moment to engage with that today. Folks, I'm grateful to be on the ride with you. It's the only one we got. Can't wait to see you on Thursday. Thursday.